Okay, so in example 1.75 from pre-calculus OpenStax, we're given this function right here and asked to determine the x values for which the function values are negative. In other words, what could you put into this thing to make a negative number come out? Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do this algebraically or graphically. Uh, graphically would be a bit of a challenge, although it might add intuition. It might help you understand this more deeply if you can do it both ways. I'm going to talk about graphically kind of quickly. Um, you have this function right here, you can graph it. Because all it is is a whole bunch of transformations of your toolkit function, the absolute value of x. I'm going to take all the y coordinates and multiply them by negative 1 half, and then I'm going to add 3 to all the y coordinates, and then I'm going to add 5, in other words, subtract negative 5 from all the x coordinates, and then I'm going to divide all the x coordinates by 4. And so what I'll do is I'll take my original absolute value graph, which looks something like this, and label 3 or so points on that, and transform the points and see where they go and I'll end up with this graph in blue right here. And so if you can come up with this graph in blue right here, either just freehand or by using a graphing device, then you can solve the question, when is f of x less than zero? Well, f of x is the output, so really I'm being asked, when does this graph have a height that's less than zero? Well, it looks like all down here the height is less than zero, and all down here the height is less than zero. So if I'm specifying the x-coordinates, I'd say all the x-coordinates to the left of this point, and all the x-coordinates to the right of this point. And note that I don't want to include either of those two points, because I don't want it to be less than or equal to zero. It's equal to zero at these points. I don't want to include that. I strictly want it to be less than zero. I want f of x, the output, to be a negative number, in other words, less than zero. So you could do this graphically like that. I'm going to spend more time doing it algebraically. To solve things algebraically, what you do is you recognize that you're trying to figure out when negative 1 half times the absolute value of 4x minus 5 plus 3 is less than 0. For the output to be negative, I need this output to be less than 0. And so what you got to do is figure out what values of x satisfy this right here. And the way your book teaches you to do that is it says, all right, don't worry about that. That's hard with the inequalities and all. Why don't you go ahead and make it an equality? Because you can solve absolute value equalities if you've gotten to this section in the, this part of the section, I guess. Um, isolate the absolute value. So divide both sides by three. Sorry, subtract three from both sides of the equation. Getting ahead of myself here. And then multiply or... Divide both sides of the equation by negative one half, or if you prefer to avoid the fractions inside fractions, you can multiply both sides of the equation by negative two. That'll leave me with just the absolute value of four x minus five on this side and positive six on this side. And then think about how you can make this true. Well, if this four x minus five thing equals six, this would be a true statement. And if this four x minus five thing equals negative six, this would be a true statement. And I can solve each of these two equations. I could add 5 to both sides of the equation to get 11. And then divide by 4 and get x is 11 fourths. Over here, I could add 5 to both sides of the equation. And then divide by 4 and get x equals negative 1 fourth. Um, back to the graph. If you have a calculator, you could find these points exactly, or pretty exactly. These specific points you could find exactly on a graph. Um, but if you were just doing this freehand, it might be really hard to tell whether you're at negative one quarter or negative one half or negative one third or and so forth. Um, so maybe this is a problem when you see answers like this that really will motivate the use of an algebraic method. So our algebraic method is once you find these solutions to create a sign line. Create a number line, really. Here's negative one fourth. Here's 11 fourths. Those two solutions... Divide my number line up into three different regions. All of the numbers less than negative one-fourth, all of the numbers between negative one-fourth and eleven-fourths, and all of the numbers that are greater than eleven-fourths. So let's test those three regions. Okay, so first I'm going to test region one. So pick any number you want that's in region one, any number that's less than negative one-fourth. If you have a hard time figuring out what numbers are less than negative one-fourth, pick a number that's a lot less. Pick negative one-hundred or something. I happen to know that negative one is less than negative one fourth. So that's the value of x that I'm gonna test. And when I say test, I mean plug it back into this original inequality. So I got negative one half 
times the absolute value of 4 times negative 1 minus 5. And my question is, when I add 3 to that thing, will I get something that's less than 0? Well, let's see. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Minus 5 is negative 9. And the absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9. So I have negative 1 half times positive 9. Negative 1 half times positive 9 is negative 4.5. And when I add 3 to negative 4.5, I end up with negative 1.5. But you don't even need to know what number you get. Just know that you'd end up with a negative number. Negative 4.5 plus 3 is a negative number. And a negative number is less than 0. So I should put like a question mark here. And now I can answer my question and say yes. What that means is all of the numbers in region 1 are solutions. What about region 2? Pick any number you want in region 2. Um, negative 1 fourth is negative. 11 fourths is positive. So 0 must be somewhere in between those two. So I'm going to test that value. Um, so plug it into the inequality. Get a true statement here or a false statement here? Well, let's see. 4 times 0 is 0. Minus 5 is negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Negative 1 half times positive 5 is negative 5 halves. Might be easier to think about that as negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 plus 3 is a positive number. Right? Negative 2.5 plus 3 is 0.5 or 1 half. But you don't care what the value is, just that it's a positive number. In other words, it's not less than 0. So no. 0 is not in my solution set, and therefore none of the numbers in region 2 are in my solution set. What about region 3? Pick any number that's greater than 11 fourths. If you don't know what 11 fourths is, just pick a really big number. Turns out that 11 fourths is a little less than 3. So I should be able to test any number that's 3 or greater. Let's test 3. Why not? Is this a true statement? Well, let's see. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. The absolute value of 7 is 7. Negative 1 half times 7 is negative 7 halves, which is negative 3.5. Negative 3.5 plus 3 is still negative, right? You're further negative than you're getting back. Negative 3 and a half plus 3 brings you up to negative 1 half, which is less than 0. So this is a true statement. The answer here is yes. These are in my solution set. So my answer are all the numbers in region 1 and all the numbers in region 3. And then I ask myself, do I want to include the endpoints? I do not want to include my the endpoints. I don't want to include 11 fourths and negative 1 fourth. Because at those two points, this thing equals 0. That's, that's how I came up with those. I set this equal to 0 and solved. And I don't want solutions where it equals 0. I only want solutions where it's less than 0. So my answer would be all of the numbers from negative infinity up to negative 1 fourth. Union, all of the numbers from 11 fourths up to infinity, not including either of those two points, which somewhere in here that should be written. There it is. Exact same answer I got. They use decimals instead of fractions.